The first thing you notice when you drive um, a pre-emission older truck is no Volvo sounds like that. So it's 2021 and everybody's leaning towards going with the new trucks and the new technology. Me, I kind of went the other way. I've gone backwards. I decided to get out of my Volvo and I've gone into a 1996 W900. And I've done this for her for several reasons. The first reason and probably the biggest reason is I have zero absolutely zero faith in the new technology. All of the emissions, and it doesn't matter whether you, you've got a Volvo, a Packard, which is Peterbilt and Kenworth, Freightliner, Western Star, which is Freightliner anyway. It doesn't matter what you're driving these days. If it's a 2021, 2022, you've got emissions. And I don't care what anybody says. Not a single one of these manufacturers has this emissions figured out yet. We are still dealing with emissions problems on these trucks. It's ridiculous. You can go out and spend 200 plus thousand dollars on a new truck and I guarantee you within the first 90 days you're gonna have your check engine light come on and you're gonna have an emissions problem. I didn't want that anymore. I bought my truck almost brand new. I had it since 14. I had it to till just recently. I would have to estimate safely that in seven years of owning the truck, I probably sank about 70, 75,000 bucks just into the emissions, motor work emissions. And that's primarily sensors, EGR coolers, EGR valves, DPF filters, hundreds and hundreds of sensors, computers, wiring harnesses, all of that crap. Like the old saying goes like, you spend $200,000 on a computer and they throw a truck in. Well, that's what it is. With this here, this is a truck. I open the hood on this, I have a motor. Under the hood there is a 60 series Detroit. It's a great motor. There is a computer, obviously there's an ECM on it, but it's not anything like the new technology. I have no emissions. This truck passed an emissions test four days ago. Flying colors, not a single problem with the emissions on this truck. Will I be allowed to go into California? No. Am I ever gonna go into California? No, I got no desire to go into California. When I open the hood on my truck and I open the hood on my Volvo, and if I start at the nose of my Volvo and I go back five feet, there are more sensors and more technology in the first five feet of that truck than there is on this entire truck from end to end. There's more sensors in first five feet of that Volvo than there is on the whole truck. You know what? I'm tired of it. I'm absolutely frustrated all to hell with the new technology. And like I said, I have absolutely zero faith in the new technology. And that is a major reason why I went with old school. Hey guys, Ronan here. I wanted to personally thank you for watching this video. I've been recruiting drivers for about 15 years now, and I've heard hundreds and hundreds of stories of how drivers are getting mistreated by their current employers and how they're being taken advantage of by our current industry providers. So I wanted to create a channel in order to unite North American drivers, share my knowledge, educate drivers to become more successful, and hopefully one day to make a positive impact on our industry. Some concerns that I have in our industry revolve around how drivers are being mistreated by their current employers, safety on the road, parking for drivers, and driver compensation. When we unite, we can make a difference. This video on this channel is not meant for recruiting purposes. As me and my team continue to produce high quality and interesting videos, I do need your support in order to make a difference in this North American market. Please subscribe to our channel. And if you're enjoying the video you're watching, give it a thumbs up. And now back to the video. It's a safer bet for a guy at my point in, the, in my career. Do I want to drop 200,000 or 220,000 on a new truck with a big payment? And I'm going to be a slave to that truck for the next five to six years, or I can go the opposite way. I can drop well under half of that price by old technology that has been 
rebuilt and recertified and, and it's been put back together properly. And you know what? I'll get the five years that I would out of the new truck. I'll get the five years out of this and it won't cost 10th of what the new truck's gonna cost me. The other reason I bought this is just the mechanics on it and fixing it. It's a whole lot easier and cheaper to fix these motors. You know, it's a 96, 60 series Detroit. The transmission, is an 18 speed Eaton Fuller. The differentials, they're all old school. There's not a whole lot of technology on them and they're a whole lot easier to fix and they're cheaper to fix. And I'll give you an example. On my Volvo to repair or to replace the turbo, you, I, blew, I blew the turbo, 7,500 bucks and then the labor and everything. out the door I was around 8,000, just over $8,000 for the turbo on that Volvo, okay? Now I'm replacing the turbo on this. I suspect there was an issue. I knew about it when I bought it, so I'm not concerned about it. But out the door to replace the turbo, purchase it, the labor, everything, I'm under 2,000 bucks on a turbo for a 60 series Detroit motor. Now these are Canadian prices as well. So if you're a US driver and you're going, oh my God, you paid this much? No, this is Canadian prices, not US. But those are the differences. Let's just say you've come out of school, you've taken the truck driving course, you got on with a company, you're a company driver, and you got three, five, six years of company driving, you wanna be an owner operator, and you're thinking, okay, this old fart here, he's making some sense, let's explore this. There are some things you do have to watch out for. Okay, for example, like the odometer on this truck shows two million kilometers. The truck's 24 years old. The motor doesn't have 2 million kilometers, the trans doesn't, and the dips. If you're looking at doing something like this, there are some things that you got to watch and there are some pitfalls. The first thing, obviously, is you're not going to want a 60 series Detroit motor with 2 million kilometers on it, unless you plan to rebuild it yourself. But most guys like me, I'm not rebuilding a motor. So I set myself out a criteria of this is what the truck had to have in order for me to buy it. And this is what I set out. I said, the motor, I needed a rebuilt motor. I didn't want it to be more than a year old. Now this motor here was rebuilt. It had a, a total in-frame done. It was done 18 months ago. Now that's over the year, but it's only got 80,000 kilometers on it and, and it wasn't driven hard. So it's just actually at the break-in point. So I wasn't too worried about the 18 months. But if you're looking at this, you want a freshly or as fresh as possible rebuilt motor and you're obviously going to want a motor pre 2007 so 2006 and older because you don't want the emissions so you're going to want something that's been freshly rebuilt and you don't want something that somebody's just slapped a bunch of new parts on okay and called it a rebuilt motor you want paperwork and you want to know where it was rebuilt it takes a little bit more work but you're going to do that when you're buying a new truck if, if you're buying a newer truck anyway you're going to want to know the history on it so get as much of the history on the truck and i was able to do that it was it was a guy that owned this truck well, i didn't buy it from a company i actually bought it from the owner of the truck and he had the service history the, the the company and the shop that rebuilt the motor i actually spoke to the guy who did the rebuild on the motor when i had any questions and, and he was very open and he was good and it's the same thing with the transmission. You don't want a transmission that's got 2 million miles on it or kilometers on it. You want something that's been rebuilt within the last year, year and a bit. And I set out the criteria that everything on the truck, all the major big ticket money items I had to have, they all had to be rebuilt within the last year or within reason. And luckily for me, when the motor was rebuilt, the diffs were done too. So they were both done at 18 months, but they both only got 80,000. The transmission was rebuilt just under a year ago. So I didn't have to worry about that. That fell into my criteria. And then you also want to try to get as much of the service history. Like when were the oil changes done, oil samples done? You want as much of that as you can possibly get. And, and I was lucky, I, for most part, I was able to get mostly everything that I was asking for. The guy had it, or if he didn't have it, he was able to get it. So that's one thing, that's, that's what, those are the, some pitfalls and some things you really got to watch for when you're buying these older trucks. Also check your frame. If it's a 20 year old truck, Check your frame, make sure it's all the way from one end to the back, all the way to the front. Check for rust, check for rot, make sure you don't have any cracks. If the frame has run down the road for 2 million kilometers, that's a lot of kilometers. Check these kind of things out. They're not big ticket items that you have to, you know, that you have to go out and do. You just bought the truck or you're thinking of buying the truck. You want to get in it, turn the key and drive or at least as close to that as possible. You don't want to be dropping big money into it. So 
There you go. Here's just a couple of reasons why I would take the older truck. And, uh, and those are some things that you should look for if you're thinking about doing the same thing. This is an, an 18 speed. It is a twin stick. It is not a true twin stick um, where I've got two sticks that run the high and low ranges. This stick here is my gear shift. Um, it runs your standard pattern, you know, from re your reverse all the way through. So you got reverse, then your bull low, then two, three, four, five. This stick here, it's sort of like a cheater stick. What we did is we've got for your high and low range is here and to split your gears is here. So it's, it's a bit of a handful. I'm finding especially like if you get into traffic and you've got to drop a gear real quick. I've grabbed a gear and went, oh my God, no, nope. then you got to grab this one over here. It looks really cool, but to be honest with you, the functionality of it really isn't all there. It's, it's, it's a lot of work to drive it. I like it because, it, you know, it's one of those things is like, hey, it looks cool. What the hell? I'll drive it. The other thing about these old trucks is they're so, so damn big. If you look out the windshield, like look at the nose on this truck. I came out of a Volvo, like, that's a lot of real estate up there. That's a, that's a lot of square footage up there. One of the things you really got to be careful with, with any W900 or the 379 Peterbilts, you got to be careful that if there's a car down there, like for example, I came in here this morning, while well, on my way in, I stopped at a stop sign. I was about six or seven feet away from the Volkswagen Beetle that was at the stop sign in front of me, and I couldn't see him. He was nowhere in sight. I knew he was there, but, I couldn't see them over the nose of this truck. That's something that you're really gonna have to watch. It's all about your driving technique. I'm not a hard driver. Um, I don't grab and, and mash. I believe that the trucks were built for a reason. It, when you're fully loaded, you're not supposed to go from zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds. You know, if it takes you 30 seconds to get out on the highway, pull it with 80,000 pounds, or a minute, whatever, however long it takes you, then you know what, that's how long it takes you. We are trucks, we are supposed to be slow and clunky and we are supposed to, you know, we, we go up the highway, but you gotta remember, we're moving a lot of freight and we are big. Some guys, they, especially with the new automatics, they just mash it to the floor and they let the engine and the, and the, and the transmission do all the work. Well, with this here, I do all the work so I can dictate. I don't drive it hard, I nice and easy. I keep my RPMs where they're supposed to be I drive the truck, you know, it's, it's comfortable. I don't, I'm not abusing anything. When you've got an older truck and an older motor, you don't want to abuse it. I, I would almost say the same for a new truck. If you, you guys that get these new trucks and they drive them like they stole them, it's not necessary. All you're doing is putting unnecessary wear and tear on your truck and it's like, who, the, who wants to do that? I don't want to do that. Here's a sound you don't hear very often. You don't get that out of a Volvo or a Freightliner. God, I love the sound of Jake's, like real Jake brakes. I love them. They're awesome. You take care of a truck like this at this age, you'll get five, six, seven years out of it. There's no reason why this truck should not last me easily five or six years before I have to do any major work to it. That's just the same as a new truck in my book. And I don't have a $3,000 a month truck payment and I don't have, uh, you know, all the emissions and all the crap. Love it. Not that I need bling for in a truck, but it came with it. This is how the truck came when I bought it. I got no issues with that. It looks, in my opinion, it looks good. I like it.